Hey everyone, welcome to Kingdom Builder TV. I am your host, Jay Heilman, and I'm excited to be joined today by the lead singer of the Grammy and Dove Award winning band Casting Crowns, Mark Hall. How are you doing today, my friend? Doing good, Jay. How you been? I've been doing good. Uh, I'm here in Central Florida, and it's finally starting to get cool. It was 50 degrees when I woke up this morning, which is which is really nice for that's crazy talk in Florida. Here. Yeah. yeah. So I am really excited about this new documentary called Home by Sunday, which tells the story of the band, your band Casting Crowns. And mm -hmm. even though uh, I am somebody who's very familiar with the story of Casting Crowns over the last 20 years of working in the industry, um, not all the fans know uh, about the story behind the band and how you guys got started. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this film and how it came to be? Well, I've been a youth pastor longer than crowns has been a band and um music was something that kind of came natural to me and teaching was not so <laughs> i was scared to death of students and uh, i was like 21 i had like 12 kids sitting in front of me and like, they looked like pit bulls i didn't know what they were going to do you know and and i'm in charge all of a sudden so i decided that i could just find really good christian songs and sing those to them and then show them the scripture that that the song was based on. So that was what, how I, I taught to start with. And then I was going to Bible college. And in the, in the journey of that, because I spent six years at that four-year Bible college, so I had plenty of time to work this craft. But uh, I started kind of praying my songs. It was really just praying in the car. Because every time I would leave school, I was pretty much quitting school, if that makes sense. Because uh, I'm dyslexic and ADD, so... College was a nightmare, and I was on I was on academic probation every semester. It was an amazing school, uh, uh, Baptist College of Florida, uh, up in Graceville is where I, where I, I graduated, and but I was just not good at school, and it started with <clears throat> it started with me whining and praying in the car on the drive home, forty five minutes to get to my house. Um, that I started singing my prayers. I don't know when it started. I was just like listening to worship music and I kind of sing things and it would just kind of start happening. And my teenagers were the very first to hear those because I was scared to sing in front of anybody else really. So that's where it started. And I started getting students to play with me and lead worship with me. So every, every when I go to a church, I would start a band to lead worship for the students. So when I went to Daytona Beach, that's where I met Melody and Juwan, Hector, Chris, Darren, who's our, who is the sound guy for the youth group. He's still the sound guy for us. I mean, he's the production manager for Crowns and uh, we call him the eighth crown. So it was all really just to teach the students because I wanted my, my students and their families to get into the word for themselves. That's what I wanted to see because everything changed for me as a believer when I started reading scripture for myself, because as great as it is to have a pastor talk to you or even a singer talk to you, you will find a way to disconnect yourself from it. You will find a way to go, well, that guy doesn't know me or that guy's theology. I mean, we're all theology experts now. I mean, it's all over Instagram. You can rate everybody's sermon. So, so, you know, we're all that. And, uh, but when it's just you and Jesus in your room, man, you, you can't look in a mirror and say, that's not my face. So, so I, I know that I need to get them into the word. So I would tell them my stories. And those were some of the first people to ever hear me say, I'm dyslexic. I was 21 before I ever told anybody that. And I started seeing in scripture that Paul said, I'm going to boast about my weakness so that Christ's power will rest in me. And that was something that I wasn't ready to read. I was sort of looking for the abracadabra verse that made all your problems go away. And mm -hmm. uh, it's not in there. It's not in there. So, so it was God's big and your limitations are going to cause you to have to depend on him more. And, and that's where it began. And uh, being on a, <clears throat> being on a record, being on the radio, was never on our radar. We were just writing songs for our students. And uh, families would come to us and say, man, you need to record these songs. You need to get, you need to record it. Where can we find these? And I'm like, here, this is it. You know, 
we don't have money to go do this sort of stuff. You know, now you can make a record on your phone, but you couldn't then, you know? And um, so parents got together and sent us to a little studio, said, we want, we're going to pay for you to record these songs for, for uh, the students. So we made a little CD for our youth group. There's two of those before anybody ever else heard us. And um, so a college kid took his CD to college and he's at a basketball camp. And that is where he met Mark Miller of Sawyer Brown, country band. And uh, he walked up to Mark Miller and said, you need to hear my youth pastor. Mark Miller goes on vacation with Stephen Curtis Chapman because they vacation together every year. And they're just spending their vacation listening to our little record, our little CD, and call me from the beach. And I'm eating pizza with a bunch of guys, literally three miles from where I'm sitting right now. And mm. I get a call and it was one of the, you know, back in the day, you would get a call from a number you wouldn't know and you would still answer it. <laughs> so I just answered it. And this is deep voice. I'm Mark Miller of Sawyer Brown. And I'm here with Stephen Curtis Chapman. And like, what is life right now? What is happening? And he said, we feel like your music needs to be heard. And the way he said it was, <clears throat> he said, you guys are saying hard things, but you're not saying it hard. And there's something about that. We need that. And um, i never heard anybody say that before. And he said, uh, Stephen and I have always wanted to do something in music, but we've never really had a chance until now. We think you guys are it. He said, we're starting a label right now at the beach. We're going to call it Beach Street Records. And we want Casting Crowns to be our first artist. And that's literally where this all happened. And I told him in the, the Johnny's Pizza parking lot, I said, well, I'm a youth pastor. And can I stay a youth pastor and do all that? And he said, well, I don't know if you can, but we can, if that's, how, if that's what you want. And I said, that's what I want. So that's where it all started. And from the very beginning, uh, as, met, as much concern as it caused in the music industry when they would hear me say this stuff, because everybody in the music industry talked to, their biggest dream is to, to be signed. And now they got me walking in the door going, I don't know, fellas. You know, I, I, as long as I can be home Sunday through Wednesday, I'll do this. <laughs> and it was not the normal. And, um, but what we knew was God brought it to us. So it, if it's his idea, this is going to work out. And right. so far it's worked out. First 20 years have been great. Yeah. And that's, and you know, I remember uh, I got saved in 2003. So I got saved uh, yeah. right, right when crowns started uh, and released the first record. I remember hearing the first record and it was just getting in the Christian music, but I'm like, these guys are going to go somewhere. And I told friends, I said, these guys are going to go somewhere. Because at the time, there were a lot of groups around back then. You know, I had people say, yeah, yeah, they, they sound okay. Yeah, we'll we'll see. Well, here we are 20 years later. Uh, <laughs> over 12 million records sold, uh, Dub Awards, Grammy Awards. and But the, the cool thing I like about you and your mentality with Casting Crowns is that, like you said, the, the band has never been about accolades it's been about jesus and you guys prove that again and again and again on every record you release and you know i'm just i'm thankful for that because you know and we were talking pre-interview <clears throat> about something you know, I just want to thank you for this before i forget but in this documentary uh there's a lot of interviews with fans there's interviews with people mm -hmm. in the band um great great documentary and i would encourage people watching in to check this out when it's uh when it's in theaters but Casting Crown's fan set from this documentary has an identical story to mine, um, so much so that it gave me goosebumps. And I got even a little emotional watching the, the screener for the for the documentary. But um, I lost my wife, Shannon, to COVID in uh, September of 2021. And uh, she was a, not only a huge fan of, of you guys and Casting Crown's, but, you know, Mercy Me, Chris Tomlin for King Country or some of her favorites. Um all this music really encouraged her in life. And I just remember uh, just before speaking at her celebration of life, um, 
we had uh, videos playing up on the screen with pictures of me, her, and the kids and everything. And uh, then the song Scars in Heaven comes on as this stuff's playing in the background. <laughs> and obviously I was crushed. Um, but I was also very comforted by the words of that song because even though that she was no longer here with us, uh, the only scars in heaven truly were the hands that held her for eternity. And... Mm -hmm. That was honestly one of the last songs that she heard. Um, I had a pre-release of of the single. I heard it about a month before it hit radio, and she yeah. listened to it with me. And um, she was, you know, deeply affected by the song. And she told me, she's like, the song just reminds me so much of everyone, my friends and family that have went on to be with Jesus. And it's just mm -hmm. a great reminder that no matter what we're going through here, no matter what they went through here before they passed away, um, they're being held by, by Jesus now. And, mm. you know, I meant that song meant so much to her. Um, it means a lot to me. It's mean meant even more to me now. Um, and I still, I still can't listen to it now without getting emotional. And I guess my leading to my question, you know, how many times have you heard the same thing in regards to that particular song since you guys released it in 2021? Man, I, I feel like, <clears throat> So much of our crowd at a Crown concert, um, they're there because of Praise in the Storm and uh, Scars in Heaven. And because uh, God uses songs. God doesn't need them, but he uses them when they point to him. And uh, there have been songs that have met me right when I needed it. And um, that's why I think we have to be so careful when we write songs is, is that we're basing what we're saying on scripture and we're basing it on, on, on truth, you know, and, um, my songs usually start with feelings because feelings are louder and this is how I feel right now, but then I've got to let God, God's word, tell me the truth about my feelings and that that's the journey. And, uh, for me, uh, the song is is special. It, it, it's it's got official stories, but it's got unofficial stories. And uh, I'm walking with my dad through uh, dementia and uh, Alzheimer's, and um, in many ways, uh, he was on my mind all through the writing of the song. I mean, there are a lot of people and situations sprinkled through there, but. I feel like I'm writing my dad's song before he passes because I won't be able to then. And I'm going to need to be reminded of the truth because when you're hurting, uh, you're just, you're spinning. And and it, it takes something steady to hold you together. And uh, I wrote Just Be Held two years before I had cancer. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not saying any kind of weird prophet thing. I'm just saying God lets me write songs sometimes because he knows Um he knows I'll have to stand on the stage and sing them over and over and over again. And he knows I'm a slow learner. So I think he lets me do that. But uh, the the idea of scars in heaven, um, the word picture, I wrote in a song years ago called Wedding Day. And it's the picture of Jesus returning and, and meeting the church as the bride. And that's the first time I ever said, the only scars in heaven will touch your face. And I was talking with my mom about losing our parents and um the scripture that that comes from is when jesus appeared to his disciples and they didn't know how to accept that he was standing there they didn't know what to do with that and he showed him his scars and i remember telling my mom that day jesus still has his scars and because jesus still has his scars hmm. we're not going to have ours the reason there are no tears in heaven is because Jesus took that. He took all of it. The reason there's no pain in heaven is because he took all of that. And just as the ones that have trusted him are with him, they have rest. Um, we can rest in that. And <clears throat> the word hallelujah is in the song. And that's a very important moment in the song scars in heaven because 
That's not a moment of saying, hey, I'm okay. Because I don't think we need to fake it till we make it. I think God can handle where we are. He can handle me being not okay. Can he, I pray, if I'm mad, I pray mad. If I'm sad, I pray sad. And he can handle it. So what I'm saying when I say hallelujah is I'm not okay. But I'm going to give that to you today. Hmm. That's what it's saying. And I'm going to have to probably give it back to him tomorrow too. And um, that song is a process, like all the songs that I write. So. I've had to give it to God a lot over the last two years, but I tell you what, he, he's never failed me, still hasn't. And I know he never <laughs> will. And I'm just, I'm thankful for that. And I'm really thankful for songs like this that you know, remind us of that. I know I'm not the only Casting Crowns fan that sees that uh, and sees that with the songs. And you know, I, I certainly have my favorites. Obviously, that song has been pre pretty profound in my life for the last couple of years. Yeah. But, you know, I like other songs like Voice of, Voice of Truth was one mm -hmm. of the first songs I heard from from the band. And um, some of my others are What If I Gave Everything, uh, Set Me Free, wow. Praise the Storm. Um, but I think one of the songs that really changed my life uh, as far as, you know, especially within mm -hmm. my marriage was Broken Together. Um, yeah. That song really helped my wife and I repair our a marriage. So I want, I want to thank you for that song too. Thank um, you. and you know, I guess the question is, is that when, what is your reaction when you hear that your songs, things that you have sat and written from your heart have really helped encourage, inspire, and even lead people to Christ over the years? It's a humble feeling. Um, and I get out of the way of those compliments. Because at the end of the day, um, you're connecting with God through a song that he let me write. There's, there's no place for me in that, in that moment. So, um, you know, I, I can think of songs that I forgot that I knew. Like we had a, uh, a big anniversary concert for Michael Olivia Smith. And we had to sing a song for him. No, I had to <clears throat> sing a song for the crowd of his. And the one that I wanted was taken. So I went back and uh, I was listening to I'll Lead You Home. That was the record. That was my comeback to Jesus record. Just listening to him just be honest about failing and fear and doubt and all these things. And, and there was a song in there um, called, I think it was called Breathe on Breathe in Me. I don't even know the name of it. And that's the point. Um, I was listening for the one that I liked that I wanted to sing. And then I heard that song. And it just opened everything up in me that I, I forgot happened. And I was reminded of God meeting me in that moment through that song. And I forgot the song even existed. And I think that's the way it's supposed to be, right? The song is not the point. The song is just pointing you to the point. And, and when I hear somebody that I, I hope they're closer to Jesus and not just closer to the song, because the song's going to get old. You know, and uh, um, but it, it, it's to me, it's confirmation that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But it's also confirmation that God uses our story, like yeah. even your story. You know, you have a story that I can't tell. And there are people that they need to hear people say it's going to be OK, but they need to hear it from somebody that's not OK. You know, we want to hear, I don't want to hear from people have it all together because they're lying. I want to hear from somebody that's been through it and they're, they're hurting and they're still walking through it. And that's how we see God is here. And then he's working Amen. is through our stories. Yeah. And you're in your songs have ministered to many millions of people in the last two decades. And, you know, I want to <clears> congratulate <throat> you and the band on uh, the release of life songs, uh, celebration yeah. of the first two years. And, you know, I know that that must have been, you know, like you said, like a very humble experience to have, you know, fellow music friends and industry legends like Stephen Curtis Chapman, Amy Graham, and even Backstreet Boy Brian Luttrell. Uh, That's covers right. some, of these, some of these songs of yours. So I, it's, you know, very exciting to to hear those, 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 uh, their renditions of your songs. And, but, you know, going back to the documentary, uh, what is your hope and prayer when it comes to Home by Sunday? You know, when moviegoers go and see this in theaters uh, and, and the credits start rolling, you know, what do you hope they take away from it the most? I hope that believers leave there thinking 
about themselves in a way that they're thinking, am I, am I doing what God called me to do? Have I stepped out into what he's got me, got for me to do? Um, I want to see people discover their own ministry. You know, we're not the audience of Christ. We're the body of Christ. So there's, there's something that you're supposed to be doing that the, the preachers can't do. And, and that's the goal of this movie um, is, is because when they first told me they wanted to make one, I told them no for a long time. I was like, man, I don't, I don't need a movie. I, I don't have any car chases in my, in my story. There's no superpowers or anything, you know? And uh, so, so, I, but I, I said, if you make it about the songs and you'll make it about people being reached by a message and stepping forward, um, I'll do it. So we built it around the songs and making sure everybody that watches it knows uh, there are no rock stars in this story. You know, we're all just doing what God called us to do. And that's what you can do too. Hey, Amen. Well, Mark, thank you so much again, not only for the music of Casting Crowns over the last 20 years, but for taking the time to talk with us today. I pray that the Lord can continue to <clears throat> use you and Casting Crowns to point people to Jesus, brother. Man, I appreciate it, buddy.